Good evening, everyone, and welcome to episode 150 of Androids oh, and Aliens. Can you believe it? 150! 150! <laughs> Can't believe it. Whoo! Sydney, how long you been with us? I was going to say, that can't be right, because I am I joined the show, and I definitely haven't done 150 episodes, and I feel like I'm a main part of the show, so maybe the stuff well, before doesn't count. Mm? Main part is a strong <laughs> word. <laughs> okay, there's you a few words. You came, Which one strong, is it? Strong? It's a strong couple of words. <laughs> uh, you came in around 96, I think. I think, yeah. I think it was because we had the big party for 100 Mm-hmm, mm. mm-hmm. And I think it was like a few before that. I think you're right, 96. Yeah, ni- 96. We went live for about six weeks, and then the <laughs> world imploded on itself. Uh, so for you, this is just the big 54 or 55, right? 96, Still big. Seven, nine, St- nine, that's nine, a long time. 55. Yeah, 55. Hey, give it hey, up for Sydney and the big 55. Uh, guys, guys, so no, no. Tonight. You guys, you guys. You guys deserve it. 150. Shit. No, no, I want to talk about you and David. David is David's 55th as well. David, oh, give it up for this guy. Thank you. Son of a bitch. Oh. How are you? Uh, this is David Winters. Oh, just happy to be here too. Um, celebrating with a uh, pale stranger. Uh, a little scotch <laughs> Mountain Dew. <laughs> no, you're not. Yes, is I that am. actually Mountain Dew? No, it is not. Oh, yeah, it's Mountain Dew. It's Mountain Dew. Uh, and a but single it, malt scotch? Uh, it, yeah, Lafroig 10, actually. <laughs> And, and what did you garnish it with? Gummy bears? <laughs> no, three, ch- <laughs> three, three brandy cherries. cherries. Too thick. <laughs> three brandy cherries. They say the pale stranger, it puts hair on your chest and pimples on your face. <laughs> <laughs> and just uh, takes your sperm count down. Uh, just uh, that's <laughs> the you can't even drink it. You can't even mm. take a sip. I'm going to choke this down all episode. And if I get halfway through it in the next uh, hour and a half, I'll be really proud of myself. (laughs) All it does, all it accomplishes is ruining scotch. That's the only thing that the drink accomplishes. (laughs) I I told David pre-show that he saved me from having to go to an AA meeting this week because that discouraged me from drinking all on its own. I'm done too. It's the mere mention of it. That's all it took. Uh, You're a trooper. Well, uh, here we are. Here we are. It's Friday night. Uh, only a couple more of these uh, gatherings left. You oh, keep man. saying that, and I yeah. I don't know. You've been saying it for like 10 episodes. I think we got at least 10 more. Yeah. Why do you keep saying it? Well, I'm just letting the gravitas of the moment sink in. You never know when uh, the episode we start could be your last. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. I guarantee you that's not true. There don't, is no way kid. you would start an episode of Androids and Aliens and not be like, this is the final episode. That's You'll true. Know. However, if one of you die, it'll be your last episode. That is true. <laughs> you made that <laughs> promise. There will be no backups. No backups from here on out. It would just be foolish. There just happens to be an 11th level PC. I'm from the Starfinder Society. Come with me. Down I was in a solo pod going through the drift for the last several weeks. I attached to the side of this airless vessel and worked my way in. I thought we I thought we all agreed that we would find our long lost cousin whose name is like Bax and we just can call him <laughs> Dax and it's the same it's the same hey, you character. You guys see my cousin Dax? <laughs> I'm trying to read him now. My cousin Dax. Down. Hey, yeah. I'm just going to affect his accent and mannerisms uh, for the rest of the few little while while we're around, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> this is wild. I'm, uh, I'm in a weird mood tonight because my uh, my wife and children are leaving town for a couple days tomorrow, and I have uh, too much work to do, and so I can't go with them, which uh, is is depressing. But it's okay. Uh, but I'm more concerned about when I finish my work, uh, what to do with myself because I when you when you're married with children and and an opportunity arises that they leave town. It's you have to do something. Uh, you just can't. And I'm afraid I'm just going to pace for four days 
trying to think about what to do uh, rather <laughs> than actually something. do something. I'll be like, ah, let me go, let me go move the trash barrel again. Uh, you know, that's, that's <laughs> what happens. I'm like, because you, when you have that world of options in front of you, you're like, I, I could drive anywhere and I could stay out as late as I want. You know, I'd like, I, I don't, I'm, I don't know what to do. And so I'm, 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 I kind of want just to sit in this episode for as long as possible. So I don't have to start making plans. <laughs> You know what most people would do? Most mm. people, if the, the wife and children were out of town for a weekend, they'd play a Starfinder game. They'd, they'd, they'd play a D&D &D <sighs> game. They'd play like, is... let's get the group together. Let's play in my place. It's free and open. That is the, the last thing I would ever <laughs> like. Uh, any game, uh, actually. Uh, I can't imagine uh, ever playing a game for fun again. Uh, but yeah, I guess that would be fun if we were, if we weren't in a pandemic No, you know, cause my wife was like, why don't you invite somebody over to watch football? I'm like, no, that's the one thing I'm really looking forward to just sitting there by myself and watching football. Uh, mm. so Scott, yeah, you know. give a nod to that. Is that your preference? You don't want to watch football with some people? I, I thought no, you were no, a watch I, with kind no, of No, I love watching with people. But if I was in Troy's circumstance, I absolutely would want to just watch a football game by myself because I'm always with like five people, whoever many yeah. people Troy has in his family. <laughs> so, I mean, that would be, a, yeah, it'd be a huge relief to just like Skin sit there and I used by to myself. watch together weekly. Uh, yeah. Back in it was awesome to be days. there too. Yeah. yeah, Joe was usually there. Those, Those were the best. Those were great I, days. I, for the first yeah. time, got uh, Red Zone, uh, convinced the, my wife to put it in the budget, watched Red Zone like two Sundays ago. And I was like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> it's like, it reminds me of the old days. It and, was. Uh, even we would my just wife, sit there and watch Red Zone the whole day, pretty yeah, much. Even Aaron like, would like, she'd be walking through the room and she'd just like get drawn in and lost <laughs> by the Red Zone. There's no commercials, it's constant action. People are constant. almost scoring all the time. It's amazing. Yeah. So, you yeah, can't even you, get up to pee. Yeah, treat yourself <laughs> to a day of Red Zone. That sounds great. That yeah. sounds great. Yeah, well, my my wife is she's the best, and so I usually can on Sundays. I can I can watch a good amount of football, but you know, there's little people coming in and just destroying everything in my office. <laughs> They're like, duh, 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 the judge is going to freeze. What is happening? God, stop! Put that down. No, God. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be that'll be fun but the rest of the weekend i'm like tomorrow night you know it's not like i live in the city anymore i can just be like go get hammered and like stumble home at four in the morning like i would fall asleep on the street if i stayed out past midnight uh and, you know i have to drive everywhere it's and like i don't want to go to a bar yeah, and where you are all, all the bars will be closing at 11 it's yeah be like, like, just go sit at a bar i you know i just can't do it like at a towny bar it's yeah. just that i've never been to with a bunch of teamsters <laughs> uh you know i i i'd like to if i can hit up one brewery that would be a huge win one brewery watch a little playoff baseball watch some watch some football that that'd be a good weekend um <laughs> i'm watching eleanor over here just okay just like the rage building within her uh, because we, we found out pre-show that Eleanor's husband is out of town for several days. So she's alone with the baby. Oh, so this my. is the complete opposite. And you're just rubbing it in her face. Yeah, I'm, just, yeah, I'm trying oh, to be I have so much the... time and I don't know how to spend it. I'll probably <laughs> yeah, my anxiety like... rule over me. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's worse? Having all minutes. this free time and not knowing what to do with it. Eleanor, you're going to have 90 minutes to yourself this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, what's funny, is, Ellie, what's funny we'll is your your partner's away and my partner's away. And immediately Ellie and I were like, girls day. We're hanging out. Oh, yeah. We're gardening. We're watching the baby. We're going out to brunch. We like made a whole a whole day of it. Oh, that's, that's what fun. you need, Troy. Yeah. You need a, yeah. a single boys day. You and your one boy. Yeah. I like one boy. I just want to be alone. Your best boy can come over. You guys can go to brunch. <laughs> yeah. Do you know any boys in your neighborhood, Troy? <laughs> no. No, I don't. I, just, I, tell, I tell my wife, I'm like, I don't want any more friends. I got enough friends. I'm too old for new friends. It's too much work. I'm not even a good friend to the ones that I have. I can't start a new one. It's like, why don't you talk? That guy that across the true. street seems really nice. I'm like, great. I don't, I don't care. Uh, you, I yeah, can no. see you just like pulling the trash out to the street and like him being even vaguely in the vicinity and you just being like, 
Please don't talk to me. Please don't talk. To me. Please don't look up and talk. To I me. mean, I am so crazy. If I like start to take the trash out and I see a neighbor walking their dog, I'll just leave the trash in the middle of the driveway. I'm like, I'll, I'll deal with this later. So, just because I don't want to be like, hi, how are you? Because that might lead to a, so what's going on? How are the kids? And I'll be like, I don't want to talk to you. I think if you've abandoned your trash that many times on sight of a neighbor, the problem is taking care of itself, Troy. They're never going to talk to you after you've been that insane. Like, oh, I forgot the blah, blah, blah. And I just leave. Uh, have you ever considered no you haven't because you can't accept reality outside of your own consciousness but have you ever considered they don't really want to talk to you for that long either it's possible but out here everybody's like oh everybody wants to know each other's business it's a very like what's going on how are the kids have they, we love your house all the halloween decorations look great it's just it's too much thank you it seems wow. like regular people want to have those conversations that they never want them to stop like, yeah. say, hey, <laughs> like, but you got new siding on the house there? It's just like, <laughs> what? but then they could just go on like that for hours if you let them. All normal people. <laughs> yeah. There's this, there's this salesman that comes around every once in a while and they're trying to sell fucking oh. who, who knows what. Old it's Gil? like siding. <laughs> Is it it's old Gil. No, it's Gil. a young kid. And he came by last year and I'm like, ah, oh, we just moved in. We're, we're, we're selling the house in like a year. We're getting out of here. So I don't want to do any uh, side or anything like that. He's like, you sure? You're like, ah, no, I don't want to. I just lied to him. I'm like, no, we're, I don't want to do any more modifications. And, uh, so anyways, a couple months ago, he came back and I just said, honey, keep the shades drawn. And I just waited. <laughs> and finally he left. And then the other day, Guy, a new a new guy came back, same jacket, clipboard, uh, and he rings the doorbell and he's just waiting. And so I stick my head out the door. It's raining, and he's just like, "Hey, what's going on? Uh, hey, well, how, well, how old are you?" I'm like, "Forty three. He's like, "You look great for forty three. I'm like, "Please just shoot me in the face rather than continue this conversation, <laughs> you terrible salesman." And he just goes on and on. He's like, "So can I? Uh, I was thinking maybe we could do this." And I'm like, "Yeah, no, we're we're, we're moving soon. We're we're selling the house, and uh, for, uh, we're gonna actually I might just burn it down uh, on our way out. So I don't want to do anything to." it and he's like well maybe i could get your phone number and we could set up and i'm just trying to get out of this conversation i'm like yeah uh sure uh, uh, but i gave a fake phone number and then he's like okay great so are you going to be around tomorrow and i'm like uh no tomorrow my, we're gonna it's you know columbus day we're Wait. gonna be out of here and he's like well what about the next day i'm like uh, you know maybe he's like all right so i'll have my guy come with 9 a.m or you want to do maybe i'm like no it's not gonna work. maybe after four i'm like i'm like you know what i am not getting the product you're trying to sell i'm really sorry you seem really nice but please just and he's like okay uh, sorry and he walked away that was only you had led with God. that yeah, I so should have led with that but I feel guilty <laughs> I want them to take a hint I've got my head out the door barely peeking out that he would just get the hint like I'm, I, this guy doesn't want to talk to me Ugh, it just drives me nuts but you did talk to him I know I did <laughs> the whole time you have a tendency to do this in, in an effort to be nice you drag it out until you make people so sad if you would have just up front said, I'm not interested, thank you. And just no. shut the door in his face. Rudely, at least you wouldn't have wasted his time. I guess not. Yeah, that's the other thing. You did, you wasted his time. Well, now he knows how it feels. Dude, it is, <laughs> it is so brutal. But, uh, God, like door-to-door -door salesman. I've done it, and I've had it done to me. It's so brutal. It's awful. I it's walked not, in the, you were talking it's about awful. that, yeah. yeah. Oh, I did it too. Awful. I was selling things and uh, I, I walked in the house. I turned to Archer and I said, don't ever go up to be a salesman. I was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it too. It, is, it sucks. It sucks. So I was a hard. telephone telephone saleswoman. Um, oh, that it was my too. first job at 16 and I tried to sell male underwear. Uh <laughs> And I don't know, I was underwear like underwear very... Underwear you send through the mail or, or underwear that. for men? I have no idea, actually. I was just, <laughs> I was sent a script and I just repeated that script to these poor fucks who were like, they were like, I don't want to talk to anyone. And I'm like, okay, how about, uh, like, how about underwear for your, for your penis or whatever I said? I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> a little script. <laughs> Sir, would you like some underwear for your penis? <laughs> penis? <laughs> Hello? We're not like Hello? other underwear companies. This is for your penis, actually. <laughs> That's sort of like a cotton condom. 
Uh, that's how it's been described. <laughs> For those of you who just a regular set of boxers or briefs is not enough. We <laughs> offer under underwear. Right. <laughs> regular right. underwear could be too well, Ellie, over I overkill. Was, I was gonna ask though, I feel like with your your European demeanor, like Americans are known for being like Oh, how's it going? And we talk to the cashier and Europeans are usually like, why do you do it? Like, why do you talk to the cashier? How, sure. how'd you do with sales where you would be like, do you want to buy this? No. Okay. And you would just like, hang up. <laughs> See, well, I mean, people are really rude to telemarketers. Like people are not like kind as Troy was and, you know, like, Hey, how's it going? Whatever. They're yeah. like, fuck you. And then, you know, <laughs> throws it in your face. But, um, but I will say Europeans in general don't really do the small talk stuff. Swedes in particular do not do the small talk. My mom, when a neighbor says hi, she's like, what a fucking bitch. <laughs> How dare she? <laughs> <laughs> That's the way we operate. Uh, Troy my mom is just nodding. Take... She's, he's like, I get this. Yeah. This, yeah. Makes, yeah. No, this <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> my, mom, in order to, uh, my mom, in order to avoid talking to a couple of neighbors, she would go like a 60 hour long walk just to not encounter them uh mm -hmm. and we're like where's mom and she and then she's like i just don't don't want to talk to them <laughs> i'm like okay but then the neighbors were already there waiting for you know it was it was really funny but because <laughs> she's like i walked for like 60 minutes to avoid them and they're still here uh so i don't know <laughs> but i've said it before troy i think you would actually like sweden i mean no one wants to talk to you it's cold all the time and uh i don't know actually what else you need in life <laughs> you're selling yeah, me you on it i'll tell you yeah. yeah, you need but you, cold, yeah, overcast I'm, weather and uh, and solitary confinement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not having to see another human being for long stretches of time. I think we can all yeah. agree the world would be better without people. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's objectively true. Yeah, that's, I the mean, world yeah. certainly would agree. Yes, yes, yes. yeah. That's we true. haven't exactly been kind to the world. Yes. Uh, I, I thought you were going to say, I think we all can agree the world would be better if I moved to Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> but poor Sweden. Yeah. yeah I'm your problem like now. <laughs> uh, speaking of problems, you almost had a bit of a problem last week fighting those black monks. They were nasty, but nasty. you beat them. You, mm. you took a fa it was a very risky move here. You have not rested in about 25 combats and you pushed through into what ended up being a difficult fight that I rolled pretty poorly. You guys rolled well, but I mean, Friss was on the ropes. It, it got, it got bad. Uh, but now you are in the command center of the ship, which you know, from your schematics, isn't very big. Uh, there are double doors uh, to the, the, the four section of this room that looked like they'd been like double barricaded over, like sci-fi barricade, you know, on top of it. Um, like uh, when they're on uh, the, uh, the, the end door and uh, yeah. the second. And the uh, second uh, doors. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, they're doors. Endor doors. Uh, end doors, end doors. End doors, you could call them. Uh, uh, it's the forest moon, Troy. It's, it's the forest moon, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on. I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, Hand in your nerd card right now. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> Insert it into my iMac. Uh, <laughs> there is there are two stairs going up to little landings that have doors leading out. Um, and then there's this treasure situation in here. Uh, I want to talk about the treasure, and then I want to talk about where you're at here, and I want to find out what you want to do. Okay. So let's talk about the treasure because you were some of you were doing some checks mid combat, and uh, I, I don't know if you've, I can't remember. I don't think you've identified everything here. So I'm going to say that you just you you have the, the with 19 people in this party, you have enough skill at this point to identify stuff. I'm not going to be like, well, you're never going to know what that does, uh, and then we'll end the adventure. You never got to use. Yeah, because we're, we're out of time. <laughs> yeah, and also, like, you're going to, everyone's going to be fighting over everything here. Uh, so let's just talk through them. I said that uh, one thing were these, like, uh, eyes, mm -hmm. eyes of Rion. I think someone uh, identified this mid combat. And this is when, when you hold one of the eyes in one hand, you can control the other one as a spy drone. It right. can't be upgraded. And you see what that flying eye sees through the eye you hold. However, if you put both gems over your own eyes, 
uh, it burrows into your skull and replaces your eyes, destroying the optic nerves of your actual eyes. Um, and they end up functioning as a long range dark vision capacitor augmentation. Uh, while they're burrowed in, you can still send one out as a spy drone, uh, during which time you lose the dark vision. Um, weird. That one is probably the weirdest one of the bunch. Like, you gotta be a real weirdo to even want that. I think <laughs> that that one is very straightforward and awesome. I think it's cool. Yeah, the spy it's drone like part is amazing. The only weird part about it is, like, which path to take, because they're both yeah. amazing. I, I think the other thing you have to shift your understanding and, and this being a futuristic sci-fi version of like the Pathfinder world is people are very used to augmentations. Do you know what yeah. I mean? PQ. Like people replace arms and legs and we went to a necrophage yeah. place on Eox and it's stuff that happens all the time. And sorry, PG, you were saying? PG, PG was saying that um, I already have one in my eye, so uh, I don't think she can actually use this one. Uh, yeah, if you uh, use this, it would replace any augmentation you currently have. Um, and and I'm not saying what you have is better, um, but yeah, you you paid a lot of money for it. Let's talk yeah, about it was the Terminator one. The ter okay, Terminator eyes. Let's talk about <laughs> the item known as the Warlord Warlord Stone. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> Warlords. Warlord. <laughs> this stone holds the collected <laughs> memories. <laughs> philosophies and tactics of an ancient alien warlord and is currently <laughs> set in the palm of its original owner remember i told you it's like a severed hand holding this this mark three ability crystal mm. can increase any one ability score by six if you spend an hour communing with the item as fragments of the ancient warlord's psyche flood your mind and body it's magic is then forever spent. Badass. Badass item. Warlord. Let's talk about <laughs> <laughs> the two that I didn't tell you about. <gasps> oh, yeah. The first There's is more. first is called oh, there's four. There's four trophy cases here. The first one uh is called a rune worm. Rise of the, the rune worms. <laughs> uh Right now, <gasps> this worm is like interlaced within the skull and a little bit of a spine uh, fragments hanging from the skull. Very uh, cool. It's interlaced. Very cool. It's like, it looks like a 24 inch long metallic centipede covered in runes. Oh, so cool. It's about to get a little gross. When you place it near your ear oh. or a similar orifice. Oh, the butt. It animates. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ellie, for saying oh, what everyone was thinking. Yeah, thanks, Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving no anim mystery. <laughs> yeah, right in the old bum. It Didn't animates. See that one by us. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to put it next to your uh, asshole, it would animate <laughs> and wriggle its way in. That's what Straight out of the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's nothing fuck. else. There's nothing else it does. That's it. <laughs> if you're into that, cool. That's that was actually the end of the description. <laughs> wow. That's the end of the description. Super fun. It's just, it's just a good time. We, we found a butt plug. We found a butt plug in the last room. Oh, Thirty-seven thousand credits of butt plug. Yeah, an anal centipede. Uh, it's just a good time. All right. What is it, dear Troy? What does it do? No, that's it. That's what Owen Casey Come Stevens wrote. On. <laughs> I know what it does. Oh, here it is. Once inside of your butt, ah. the rune worm <laughs> intertwines with your internal anat anatomy and releases an arcane virus that rewrites and improves some of your body's function. What? So what? mechanically speaking, what it does, it goes in there and starts rewriting your situation. And it functions as a Mark II synergi synergizing symbiote, which is able to increase a single ability score by four. However, oh. this thing is so advanced as it's working its way around inside of you and changing shit around, it can upgrade, it can instead upgrade any Mark II personal upgrade already in your system 
to a Mark III. Thereby increasing the score from a plus four to a plus six. So you could min-max, let it upgrade a two to a three, or just have it be a straight up uh, two, which is a plus four. Damn. One more item. Okay. And I saved the priciest one. For last. Oh shit! Oh, I th- into, swore into that the... orifice. May we insert this item? <laughs> <laughs> As written, it can only be the rectum. Great, great, great. Any other great. orifice would be too dangerous. <laughs> How about? Okay. The last one is called the Spear of Fates. <gasps> oh. Oh. oh man, no. is this worth some coin? Uh, you see an insignia on the hilt of it uh, that s- anyone who's really well cultured a friss most likely would notice as the uh, the, uh, the sigil of the Knights of Galarian. Oh. And it is a golden spear with a ruby blade and it functions as both an Inferno Flame Doshko and a White Star Plasma Caster. Oh, whoa. It holds one ultra capacity battery, which powers all uses of the weapon. Switching the uh, weapon from its melee functionality to ranged functionality or vice versa is a swift action. It is... A cool ass weapon. That's a it devil may so cry <laughs> nonsense. That is amazing. Yeah. Wow. Linnea would have Phenomenal. been so badass with yeah. this weapon. That would have been <sighs> perfect for her. Damn. Can I, can can... I reload my save and revive Linnea? <laughs> <laughs> I think it only makes sense if you reboard the grav train, uh, take it back to the inferno room where Linnea's body was incinerated, and throw that weapon in there as an homage to Linnea. What's it called? Yeah. You truly loved her. Spear of Fates. <laughs> Spear of Fates, but don't look it up because it may give you, I'm, I'm omitting information that's personal to the adventure. W- one other thing Whoa. of note what? is that Doshkos are, you need a specialty to use Doshkos. I think like Kreska is the only one that can wield one, right? Yeah. Yes, but does it count as a dot? It, it functions as a Doshko, but is it a spear? Cause I don't know. It, I'm wondering if I well, even have- It was, I even it was functions for the butt, as a Doshko. So I'm a, sure yeah. that Dax could use it, I mean. Yeah, but yeah, seriously, I? don't look these things up because they have, I don't know why, but they have uh, story information that I don't want you to have. Even Ooh, on archives may, of Nethys. May I? The weapons, you'll have to be uh, proficient in advanced melee weapons and then also yeah. long arms to use both halves of it. Mm-hmm. So I believe Dax is kind of your guy. Dax or Kreska are the two people with advanced, but Kreska, I don't think you have long arms, so I, I don't do know if you use arms. the other half. I have long arms like myself. A Tyrannosaurus. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not looking it up now. So what is the damage of the long arm versus... I, I put it in the Skype chat. You can see oh, it in okay. there, both weapons. If you'd shut up for a second, is <laughs> what I, David was trying to say. Callum steps forward. Oh. And Callum says, I want the worm. <laughs> <laughs> I, wa- I want it in my butt. Are you aware of how it enters your body? <laughs> yeah, I got free booter armor, so I can actually open up the little back box. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like a little pajamas. Is that, oh, no. free, is that canon for freebooter? It's got that. <laughs> That's what it means. You missed, That's what it's, yeah. you missed it's it before free. Grant, Grant was giving me shit for always being naked. And I was like, I have freebooter armor now. And then we were like, it's got little butt flaps. <laughs> yeah. Easy oh, access. Free, free booty. booty. Yep. Free, so, booty. free booty. Free booty armor. That's fun. Jinx, I made a reference a to the, uh, the Ryan O'Neill movie, So Fine. Which uh, I will personally give a dollar to anyone in the chat who knows that reference without looking it up. He will personally give you a dollar. Wow! It's like personally give you a dollar. One Skid dollar. Is not going to be one dollar poorer tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we? Should we do it in order? If we're well, you, I will auction it Dax off. Dax is the only one getting the spear. Uh, so let's say who whoa, wants whoa, 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 may, whoa, whoa, may I on the upgrades though there please. are a, a couple observations there 
Uh, you can't stack these in instances where you already have an upgrade. Obviously, one of these will let you upgrade your Mark II to a Mark III. However, on the other one, as written, it would have to be a different attribute, or it would knock out one of your other existing upgrades. So if you already have a Mark II on your primary stat, you actually might lose that. So there is also some level of optimization between the two, as far as I don't know which of you have Mark I's and Mark II's yet. I have a Mark one. I, I have, have a, a Mark, Mark One two. and a Mark Two. I have a Mark One and a Mark Two, but I also <gasps> want. But I thought I thought this was a Mark Three. It's not a Mark Three. It's just a Mark Two. Sorry. Yeah. You said well, there's two, one but there is, is one three. that is a Mark Three. The uh, okay. Isaac. Right, no, excuse me. The uh, War Warlord Stone is Warlord. a Mark Three. All right. I'll take the Warlord. Worm. Well, well I, I think other people want it. <laughs> no, no. I said it first. All right, who wants, will... Raise your hand if you're rolling off for the Warlord's turn. Let's start Wait. with the spear. I mean, is are yeah. we are we going to be like, sure, th- one character can get all of these items if they roll high? Is that how we're going to play this? Well, you're the team and Matthew's the captain. Uh, no. We, let's, rule, let's, make a, let's make a rule amongst ourselves that if you get one of these, you bow out of all further roll-offs for these items. Does well, then let's do the spear like first, because that has the least amount of people, slash only one. Come I can on. use half of it. I can use the <laughs> whole thing, and it's better than what I have. I don't, know. I don't want it. Yes! All right, All right then the I will bow out of ability crystal effect. mark three. All right, let's get the Warlord Stern, then. Who I'd like to see you roll for it, Joe, just for fun. The Stern. Now I'll roll oh, a natural my. 20. Um, okay, wait, Here. David, sorry, let's, what you were saying before. Wait, are you guys going to roll for it? What are you doing? Yep. Yeah. We're going to yeah. fake roll for it to oh, see okay, what would have okay. happened. Oh, to roll for the spear? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Fake roll. Fake, fake roll, roll off. Fake roll. Natural 19. Natural 9. Wow. Okay. Wow. okay. Cool. Good, good. It, oh, everyone but stars. Joe is in for the Warlord's turn? Wait, I just mm-hmm. wanted to double check, David. The Warlord Stone. Warlord Stone. <laughs> <laughs> this is Warlord Stern. Yeah, sorry. Warlord Stern. It's a lot of Brother of Howard Stern. Um, <laughs> can I, if I already have a Mark II for my charisma, I can then just replace this and it would be a plus six for my charisma. Yeah, I mean, if Troy wants to rule it that way, I think the the reason the other one is so cool is it upgrades one that's in an existing slot, which is why there's kind of some extra coolness to it as opposed to knocking out one that you currently have. Because as written, you would actually, uh, you could go into the shop and pay the difference to upgrade. Uh, from one step to the next, which I think a few of you have done, Honestly, but obviously you can't do I, that because you're in the I middle don't of space. Wanna, I just want the worm because I only want to. I only have one crystal. I just want to upgrade what I already have. So, is it fair to roll for to be in on rolling for both? Is everybody okay with that? I don't really want the warlord stone. I just want the the worm. Okay, let's sure. roll for the stern and okay. then see what happens. <laughs> Maybe uh, I can trade. Maybe you can do a little trade and row. All right. Fucking yes. That sounds like a nat 20. Oh, I, think Grant, uh, I think Grant got it, guys. Grant, did you roll a natural 20? I did, Troy, and it feels so good. <laughs> it feels did so anyone good, else dude. roll a natural 20? No. Uh, you, sir, get the Warlord Stern. Yes! <laughs> Please do not read the description of it. Okay. Just take its powers. And what were you going to put that into? Intelligence? or? Uh, yeah, it was going to be intelligence. That would be the jam. I, that would just. I, it's. It's. It, we seeing how powerful, uh, baleful polymorph was, and a couple other will save spells I have. Like any chance, every two is like a ten percent chance. You know, of like uh, huge. So you know, that's yeah. what I'm hoping, especially against perhaps the end of the book. <sighs> Let's roll for the worm. Who wants in on the worm? Go ahead and give it a give it the old college roll. Change dice. Ellie, you're not rolling for the worm. I can't. I already have a Mark II. Well, the two would upgrade to a three. If you, you know. <laughs> Shove it up my ass. I yes. will do it. Okay. All right. I Join the roll. Was- Join the fun. Uh, Skid, what did you roll there, buddy? Ten. Ten. Okay. Middling roll there. Uh, Ellie, what did you roll? Seventeen. <laughs> <gasps> Ooh, all right. Matthew and Sydney look like they're still in it. I'm gonna go oh Matthew. Oh my goodness. Eighteen. <gasps> oh. And what about the worm lover Callum? Nineteen. Oh, oh my wow. goodness. Wow. Oh man. What a yes. roll off. Ooh. Hot. 
hot roll off. If this is the Man. most fun we have tonight, I'm down for it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm saying. We need to go to a casino. I was promised Las Vegas and Androids and Aliens casino with Russian roulette. Roulette, not Russian. You just, yeah, we'll rent out MGM for the <laughs> seven of us. Uh, I snort the worm. You snort the worm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who wants the eyes of John? Uh, Does anyone want those? I can't, because I already have a cool Terminator effect on my eyes. I what mean, Cresty, you, you should just dark. take it and not put them in your eyes. I think you, you should take it and use spy. the spy thing, and then like make decisions based on that and all. Sure, I can do that. Skid, you asked what the uh, range is. It says long range, David. What's the mechanical uh, equivalent of long range? Uh, it's feet. either four hundred feet plus forty per either. level. 60 or 120. I think it's one oh, or, one or the, the other. Tradition. I can look it up, but... Okay. Uh, um, sorry, on that, I would assume it's 120. For it, That's like that's long-range dark vision. Hmm. Typically, then yes. 120. Okay. Normal dark vision is 60. All right, then. So, yeah, we're talking at about uh, 120, then. Who wants the eyes of John? The eyes of Rihanna. <laughs> uh, I kind of want... I want something. I know it's tough. It's, uh, everybody's got all this nice stuff. I'll uh, roll with you, Skid. Okay. So greedy. Natural eighteen. Natural <gasps> one. What? Wow. You won, Kreska, and you made Skid sad. I think <laughs> actually, I think just Skid, you just take them. It's you. You can be you. 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 You are science officer scanning anyway. So this is the uh, in-person equivalent of that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll take them. What are they called again? Eyes of Not Rayan, R H E A N, right. and of course, once again, don't read the description. But okay, do Wait, you why are we not reading the description? Are, are, because are it you tells things about the, the AP. story. Yeah, well, it just tells well, things we're about at the, the AP. end. What's it going to tell us? The end? I'm telling you, don't read it. It's it's dumb. It shouldn't tell you things, but it tells you things that you should not have information about. So you've told us everything. Are can. we going to find out while we play before the end? Yes, before the end, then I'll let you read it. But right now, if you read it, you're going to be like, what? And I'll be like, ha, 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 it was fucking uh, dumb the way they did it. Uh, so <laughs> just don't write it. You ruin your own fun. Uh, How do we, Fris, um, are you letting them, are you putting them into bed or are you just holding on to them for now? Uh, I'm embedding them in my eyes. <gasps> oh, what? Walk me through this process. You put them over your eyes. How does it, how does it go? Uh, so he's just like, he... I think he's probably heard of these things. Like he's he's read about them. So he knows what they do. And yeah, I mean, this is his thing. Like he's not squeamish yeah. about it. Uh, and PG, he's really... PG could help because she's been doing it to herself a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like, uh, uh, okay, yeah. So he's just like, um, he's getting ready to like to put in like contacts. And he's like, he turns to uh, PG and he says like, this is hard, you know, self-surgery. I've done it before, but be a bit of help It'd be useful. Say, say no more. And she uh, puts her tail in your mouth. This is going to hurt. Bite down. And then... <laughs> and... Uh, oh, oh, you have... No. <laughs> so Friss bites down on PG's tail and PG puts the thing up to the eye and starts pushing it and at a certain point it's like the eyes come to life and they burrow like bugs into Friss's uh, eyes and it hurts it hurts it's like someone's gouging out your eyes do you know <sighs> what it makes me think of in Matrix when they uh, put those worms in his uh, like belly button oh um, yeah yeah do you guys remember that the like bug. it burrows in, yeah. it's Oof. freaking disgusting uh, I, I puked a little when I saw that yeah. Frisk then blinks and he has these crystal clear blue eyes. Whoa. Sapphire eyes. We have to change the fan art. Someone change it immediately. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> awesome. What do you guys want to do here? Well, talk to your uh, old buddy Troy. Kreska, are you. You are not proficient with advanced melee weapons, just the Dashko? No, I am proficient with advanced melee weapons. Then I would recommend you take 
my infused ultra thin long sword because it, th- I'm sure it's better than the Dashko. Well, I've been, I've been using the Dashko because I've I get your I've claws are better. My claws are more effective, uh, and also I get to keep my hands free for spells. Um, gotcha. Let's see, what is okay. it? It's an infused, a, uh, ultra thin long sword. It's a uh, it's four d eight plus your strength damage. Four d eight plus your strength. Uh, it's freaking sweet, but. And you can one-hand I, that, right? So you could still have a hand open for casting, I believe, right? Uh, no, it's a two-handed. Oh, two-handed. Nope. But you can still have a hand nope, open for one. casting. You it's just one. can't. Oh, oh, it's one-handed? Ultra, it's one. Ultra Thin Longsword is one. Oh, okay, great. So, yeah, so it's just one hand. Does Starfinder have specific rules about if you're wielding a two-handed weapon, you can't cast a spell? I don't think it does. I think you can do like in Pathfinder, like, pop, cast, pop. Right back on. Yeah. Free action. In 2E... You can't, though, I think. Or maybe you can't. In 2E, it's an action to remove a hand. Remove a hand, yeah. Or no, uh, it's an action to put a hand back on. It's one, one of the, the other. Two. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. It yes. doesn't cost you two. Right. Back on. Yeah, yeah. It, my uh, my claws are still better. Wow. Wow. I don't, I think because I, I didn't take weapon specialization. I took mystic-related feats. Um, but yeah, it would just be 1d8 plus 4 on that longsword. Okay. No, All I'm right. sorry. Forty-eight plus four, but still. Oh, that's great. So two d six plus twenty. Wow. <laughs> wow. Kreska's okay. Cool. Um, I'll take. You know, I'll take the sword though. I'll just in case I ever want to do something cool with it. Yeah, and just put it on your back. It's just a good look. Yeah, it is a big good ass look. sword coming up from your sword back. Sword one side, Dashko on the other. Oh, I claws. like it. That is uh, what was it excited me about. Uh, the the our little stint pre glass cannon we played of uh, shadow run the street samurai mm-hmm. class mm-hmm. was like that yeah. just sounds awesome yeah. so yeah shim right into your skin dax is gonna hold this spear i mean is it just like glowing with magical energy it must be the coolest looking freaking thing in the world it's yeah, like it's kind of like what I thought Boba around. Fett's weapon would be like. Like it's got, it can shoot, but then you always, I always felt like he could do melee damage with that as well. It's like the thing that the guys have in uh, Stargate. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the guards in Stargate, it's like it opens, it goes whoosh, and then it shoots stuff out, but then it closes and it's a spear. Yeah. What do you guys want to do here? Um, how is everybody feeling? I think we should rest, Captain. I agree. Wait, let me check my spells. Uh, yes, I agree. We've <laughs> pressed our luck far uh, enough. Uh, yes, I agree. This will uh, be. P- this could be our last rest, though. Understood. PJ's gonna gonna burn a resolve to uh, get some of her powers back. Um, not stamina points. Another resolve, um, and uh, she feels pretty defeated because her last combat round sucked. She. Uh, couldn't communicate with anyone and had these weird visions. Like, she got really ass wiped oh, right. by, uh, right. yeah, like, smacked by uh, by those ghosts. Uh, so, and I wasted so much, because I couldn't, like, I'm an envoy, and I couldn't commute with any, couldn't communicate with anyone, so I had to burn a bunch of super expensive grenades that I had. And so, yeah. That was, uh, so I think she's gonna sit down. She's, you know, 140 years old or some similar and just gonna sit down and and uh, lick her wounds for a second while she's burning resolve so PG sits in the corner cleaning herself like a cat Dr. Friss Dax blue eyes turn at you quickly <laughs> 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 Dax Damn your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Can we utilize the um, software we have to rest here, or do we need to return to where we were previously? Like, does it seem like we're you know too much in it right now? Or uh, well, Friss, when when you talk to him, he's just like he's just looking at his own hand. Because with these eyes, like the broad spectrum, like he can see like ultraviolet and infrared, like he can see uh, just things that you people wouldn't believe. Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. 
<laughs> sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate. All these moments be lost in time. <laughs> Tears in rain. So he always says, uh, the, yeah, what, do I know the answer to the question? What was that? What is that? Blade Runner. <laughs> so, Blade Runner. Yeah, Roy uh, Batty. Uh, I think I've said this before once uh, on a show, but Tears and Rain was a working title uh, for this show for a while. Oh, cool. Yeah. I don't know if I had It was good. like one of like seven working titles that I had. Uh, anyways, you think that you've actually, uh, you're in a bad spot right here. You have exposed yourself. You are on the command deck you think your best chance is to surreptitiously get out of here try and find another corridor and use you know the viruses that you have at your disposal that some turncoat was working on uh in hangar bay and try and hide but you do fear first that you've exposed yourself by entering the command deck. You have to think that they can see everything at this point. But you've been here for a couple minutes examining these items and, and no one has come out. Yeah, it says, uh, it says, Captain, I think perhaps if we leave, we might be able to cover our tracks. Use this program to give us some security. And, but he's just like this whole time He's, he, there's something about him has changed. He's become less human, like less Yasoki, more than and less them at the same time. So it's just like, and it's got to be eerie just like looking at these new eyes, these like in, in, inhuman eyes, like in his skull now. But, uh, but yeah, that's what he says. Very well. Do we have access to a map? I can't remember. Did we? We've seen uh, plenty you, of maps, but have we yeah, taken like them with us? Yeah, like you could easily find uh, a place to hide. All right, yeah, let's use the map, find a place to hide, and then, yeah, we'll have Friss, you know, activate the virus to give us another rest. All right, um, so, go ahead, PG. I was going to say, I, th I thought it was such a cool uh, visual to, to, see, to see Friss actually getting more and more into this augmentation of, like, losing a little bit of his uh, biological... I guess I want to say humanity, but he's not a human, but um, whatever that is in rat world. Um, but um, but I think PG is walking up to him and it's like, I can see that you're getting used to it. Hmm. I would be careful because it can you can lose track of things the more you get used to it. Take my word for it. Um, and you can see like there's so much of her appearance that is so different than from what the last time you saw her. And Friss turns and he looks you up and down seeing you this, in this new spectrum. And uh, he looks you up and down with his eerie unblinking eyes. And he says, Juba, based on our current predicament, I don't think we have to worry about what will happen in the future for much longer. She smiles grimly. I understand. I let's keep an eye on the target, and as a pun, <laughs> the, good one. Uh, but one, <laughs> and she and she and you could see like her eye turning red for a second because of her mechanical eye as well. Uh, mm. I guess we see eye to eye on this matter. <laughs> a second pun. Yes, I'm good at I'm I'm, I'm rolling. <laughs> okay. PG hammers home two puns during this first series. <laughs> I think. Okay, can I just say Troy Lavalle that it's impressive to be punny in a second language. Oh I'm just my saying. god, I can't That's even true. imagine how impressive. That's true. Yeah. You want to go for a third? No, I can't. You know you can't do this to me. <laughs> do a third right now. Right now. Do okay, it. an eye for an really eye. Fun. An eye for an eye. Let's kill ah. fucking ass. Okay, no. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. That counts. You know, what's what's nice is that moment really called for back-to-back -back puns between PG and Friss. <laughs> that serious moment. It. I was thinking to myself, this is great. You know what this moment really needs? really needs back-to-back -back puns. <laughs> Giving you a hard Listen, time. All right, so you can she has seen a lot. She has seen a lot, and she wants to she wants to reconnect with someone who really helped her psychologically back in the day. I mean, he 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 tried to get her when she was like 
interested in the Eox and was、mm. like lured by their behavior. He was just like, "Don't Shuba, don't go too far into this." And she was just like, "Well, I don't have a purpose. I don't have a meaning." And so now she feels like、it's、I'm the one、circle. who's like, "Don't go f- too far into this. It's it's a、yeah. uh, it's an a、uh, it's an、yeah. uh, 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 A dangerous temptress. Yeah, this, yeah、uh, I, I agree. I think that's awesome,、uh, and it doesn't matter how corny your puns are. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they share、matter. a love of corny puns, Troy.、Right? Yes, Maybe that's, that's what they bonded over. Maybe that's their thing.、Uh, he was your therapist, and you up and left him without so much as a note. You took me out of the game. Listen. <laughs> Play the blame game here. <laughs> <laughs> play the blame game. <laughs> I think it's time to rest. So you go back to、uh, a corridor and you're looking around. There's a lot going on on the ship, and you get the sense that like you're running out of places to hide here because they've dealt with the defenses of the Gate of the Twelve Suns, and they're all coming back to prepare to take this weapon. Time is running out. You have one, possibly two more rests left, depending on a die roll. But when you get back into the corridor and、uh, Frisk starts activating、uh, the virus software to、uh, cloak you,、uh, holding the, that key,、uh, the finger bone key, seeing how much time you'll actually have, you all notice that、uh, PG has like.、Uh, Uh, kind of opened up a pack, and is just pulling shit out of there that you hadn't seen before. PG, what's going on? Sorry, wait. Tell me. <laughs> you have a big pack of stuff that you've brought. Oh, with you. Right. <laughs> um, I was a terrible moment to. Be distracted by something else. I'm sorry.、Uh, yes, <laughs> PG brings out a bag, a duffel bag with stuff. Th- that's for everyone.、Um, I think she's、uh, she's been.、Uh, she knew that people. She knew had an idea of where people would be, and so she opens up. Like I, I, I don't have this actually in my character. Like, but it's it's more for flavor. But I feel like she had she. It's part of her body somewhere. She pulls out this backpack、uh, from like a, a hidden limb, but it's not actually an augmentation I have.、Uh, and so, and she opens it up, and there's a bunch of very cool stuff for、uh, for everyone、uh, in the in the party.、Uh, but no one really has sent what they want to me, so except Sydney. So. So, so I don't know what's Callum, in it. Callum strides up to the bag. <laughs> he leans into PG and he says, "I can actually feel the worm inside me. It's、um, I'm gonna name him Jeffrey. What did you bring me?" And he looks into the bag. <laughs> oh man, goes, this is yeah. Oh no, go ahead. What? No, this is exactly like. Swedish Christmas. We actually have Santa Claus come in and give us gifts.、Uh, I was、so. about to say, Callum,、yeah. uh, the equivalent of that.、Uh, Callum kind of pauses for a moment and he says, "This is like,、um, like that holiday that."、Um, well, I don't know.、Yes. I never got to. Well, I actually never got to celebrate it. So we、um, never got to celebrate Mas Christ. Callum, no. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I know. I know it's、uh, the the large cyborg brings the bag of、uh, yes. presents for the non sinners.、Uh, and、uh, tell me,、I、have、know. you been? Yeah, have you been eating your? Have you been eating your porridge? No. And put out milk. No, if、scent. you've noticed,、no. if you've noticed,、um, we're on a death ship, so I haven't、right. been doing that exactly. Um, well, can I ho, take ho, some ho. of this? <laughs> yes. Here's a no, package Callum, for you. Callum kind of nerds out for a second. And he goes, "No way! This, this is a.、Uh, this is these are spell gems." Yes. 
I brought them for you specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie, this you are really a... selling this. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> if the, I can the knowledge I... that you're bringing to this character <laughs> <Yeah>. is amazing. <laughs> if I can interrupt <laughs> Colin Mockery and Ryan Styles for a moment. This was a great idea that David had that is now now gone to shit. Um, but basically, the idea was where you haven't had a chance to shop since like book two, PG would come and give you items that you'd really want based on the credit you had available. Yeah. So, yeah, Callum, you, you didn't said, even know, yeah. you never met Callum and Seiyun, so you didn't know that they were even going to be here. You just yeah. amazingly happened, well, I got a couple of these uh, spell gems and uh, yeah. Callum. Callum All right, so them. let's retcon it. Like, that's what, that was my initial idea, but then I panicked. Uh, but so what did I she, she just opens <laughs> up and it's like, I brought some weapons and guns and she, you see all these grenades, like it's a fucking sweatshop with like fucking <laughs> <It's a sweatshop. laughs> And like, whoa. Wait, <laughs> Maybe what happens in sweatshops? <laughs> pulls out seven <laughs> children. <laughs> Hand out the gun! Hand out the gun! Make her a spell She pulls out a whip. Wait, wait. I think oh my god. god. PG. PG what has been the big is, bad but... guy all along? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and she opens up and she has a lot of, like, a plethora of things um, that, you know, you can choose from. Like, spell gems, there are other shit that no one emailed me about, so I'm just gonna start, like, I don't know, there's, there's uh, bombs. You know, pick, pick and choose whatever you want. I am covered in it. Yeah, what does Cal everyone choose? Gid Giddily takes the spell gems and just goes, this is rad, thank, thank you so much. And then he sits with them and he's like, you know, like a teenage boy, acting like a teenage boy. Kreska also selects a spell gem. Mm. Oh, mm. how convenient. Thank you kindly, BG. You're welcome. You've been a good kid. <laughs> 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 then you give him one of these. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Chin up there, Captain. Muss her hair. Uh, what does everyone else take from this magical duffel? I uh, I will grab a n another legendary Mark III ability crystal. <laughs> I mean, as long what? as you're giving away free shit. Oh, there are some of those uh, in there? Yeah, I'll take one of those too. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, like, you <laughs> only had 8,000 credits. Uh, uh, like, no, the the, the items are not worth more than 8,000 <laughs> credits. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Um, so, yeah, we, we had talked about this, just about the value, and I, I said that I'd be fine giving mine over to whoever wants it because I'm fine with my items. But I will take... Uh, I will take the... Uh, the jet pack that Linnea had, we mentioned this as well, that that was out there. So I'll take that. Dax is going to suit up with this jet pack mm. and a freaking spear of fates. <laughs> and just be like, let's rock. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. I'm awesome. going to do jet pack. Anybody else? And, and you, little rat. <laughs> Come, little rat, sit on my lap. <laughs> Come on. But you do know Friss. <laughs> That's good. Like, she's, she's acting a role. Like she, she put a beard on, Matthew. Come on. <laughs> Did you not sin this year? Uh, I like the idea of like it's the uh, the giant cyborg brings the choice, but you, st you still put milk out? Milk, The, yes. cy the cyborg mm -hmm. likes the milk, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's right. the gesture, Joe. It's the, the gesture. Uh, yeah. I understand. <laughs> Frisk just grabs a couple of armloads of uh, really good candy. It's <laughs> candy that he likes from Akiton. Uh oh. That was thoughtful. Okay. What about Seiyun? I liked uh, the original conceit of this that, you know, PG had been thinking about the crew members that she had spent time with, and when she got shunted back in time, was like continuing to gather things through them through the ages as time went on. So I like to think Se Yun reaches in and picks out something that's like labeled, maybe with a nice Christmas label that says to Mei Shun. And then mm -hmm. it kind of has a moment there where Se Yun says, I um, believe this was for my predecessor. Is it all right if I take it from you, PG? And, and PG, when you mentioned Mei Shun, something inside of her activates and she telepathically says to Seiyun, please, 
take it. Uh, because Meishan's death impacted her so much, though she actually has Lashunta Lush- augmentations in her brain so she can telepathically talk to people. The antenna come out of Seiyun's uh, uh, cloak and like part her hair to the side and she responds to you. Thank you. I, I bow to you. And she- Quick question. Just uh, where PG knew Mei Shun was dead, she happened to have a gift to Mei Shun on her. And she got resurrected, dude. I don't know. Yeah. It's my no, it's my I dumb th- idea, but or I thought she maybe. just like she well, talk to me about this. Well, maybe she uh, brought things that she thought. Like I think P- PG picked out a bunch of things that would be useful, and maybe she was inspired uh, by like the, the team uh, the team she left. Uh, mm-hmm. Even though Michonne's dead, she's like, well, this thing could be, maybe be useful still. But Grant, you could also. Say I, this. I, I think, think maybe you were thinking. Grant did this to you. It's not your yeah, fault. Yeah, it's my fault. So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to to get us out of this. I think you were <laughs> thinking uh, sympathetically and nostalgically about your time with Mei Shun, and so you found this ability crystal that was a crystal that was a green orb like Castroville itself, and it yeah. had Mei Shun's name on it, almost like a commemorative like photo block you would get at the mall or a snow globe or something like that, and. Uh, I see it in that moment, and I say, oh, Meishan, and then I kind of take it, and it's this kind yeah. of bringing together of the worlds of the two people separated by time. And the augmentation is not, I just didn't make that up right now. I did take an augmentation that was based on Meishan, uh, based on um, Tumsi and Meishan. I like that. Good backtrack, Grant. Uh, did everyone take something from her sack? <clears throat> I, I am actually going to take something. I'm going to call an audible here. And um, that, so that jet, you said 8,000 worth of stuff, and that jet pack is 3,000. I'm going to pull out one 5,000 credit grenade. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. That she happened to bring along. Oh. She, I, have, he's like, I have so many. Is this. Pull it right off her belt. <laughs> Available. Yeah. And he just <laughs> rips it off. And the of pin's still on her belt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Take cover. Ah, ah, she shoves it in her mouth. Explosion uh, in sector four. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna grab one grenade, one crazy awesome grenade. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's what I think. But they have, you know, Dax. They uh, the the DCs are very high for these. You know how to use them. Uh, just so you know, um, grenades are cool, but they also are tough to play with, as I found out last week. Yeah, they're tough. They are tough. Uh, they're kind of weird how high they're priced, but yeah, whatever. I, I, a really expensive consumable. We're at the end of the adventure. I think it's fun. Let's just do it. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I fucking thought when I built PG. But then I feel like, you know, I spent so much money on cool stuff versus optimization. Linnea was optimization. PG is fun. PG is, I'm so excited, a song you play at 4 a.m. in the mm-hmm. nightclub. It's fucking time to, like... Wrapped That's my up. favorite song to hear at 4 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Oh, oh, tomorrow night when my wife's out of town at the night. Yeah, he's going to blast it through the point of sisters. I know, 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 I want you. I think PG is a pointer sister. I think she's a honorary pointer sister. Is that what the P stands for? Yeah. It is. Pointer sister, girl. That's PG. Pointer sister, girl. Oh, man. All right. Let's get this out of the way. Oh, damn it. To see if you will have one more rest available to you or two. I'm just going to roll a die. Then I'm going to look at that die. And then we're gonna how, about, how about three? We're just going to roll one die. What's the die? Yeah. What's the I'm number? Rolling, Are you rolling a D4? Are you rolling a D6? I'm rolling, rolling D4. And uh, three, four means uh, you have two rests. One, two means you have one rest. I've rolled after after like, tonight. Oh no! Like you either this is your final rest. Ah, uh, okay. I ain't get tip. I've rolled the die. Oh, oh no! I have a couple things for you here. I've got uh, I've got good news. I've got bad news. And I have 
interesting news. Huh. What would you like first? The die roll. The bad news. I want, I want <laughs> the, the, the die roll. Interesting. I want the sponsor message that you're going to f- throw at us. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, I would like a word from our sponsor. <laughs> that was the interesting news. We'll be right back after this word from our sponsor. <laughs> I can and read you back. like an open book. <laughs> <laughs> I can uh, read you like an open book. And boy, was it interesting. How about our sponsor, yeah. folks? There it oh, is, man. Uh, yeah, Thank patronize you. them. Butcher Box. Uh, These are coats. And now I got good news and bad news. The bad news is this is your final rest oh, of the adventure. No, Jesus oh, Jesus Christ. My uh, I knew that God. as soon as you said good news and bad What's news. What's the fucking good news? Good news. Like, news. Oh, the good news is you know it's your final rest. You leveled up. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. oh, that is good news. That's, good news. that's pretty okay. good news. Okay. That's very good news. Yeah, but it would have been good news and good news, even if we got two rests. It would have. Good, good, and interesting. Bullshit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Had you rested before you went to the trophy room, I would have leveled you up before you went in there. Uh, I was just waiting for the rest. It's our fault. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I think it's so fantastic that we did that fight and used abilities and stuff and got them back with the rest. That was a great press our luck. That was a great press our luck. Oh, yeah. I would. I was against it, but in retrospect, that was really cool and really good. Oh, and in the first in the first five minutes of the fight, I was like. We're gonna regret this enormously, but, but we got out of it, <laughs> and we did fine. And good on good on everybody. <laughs> David and also, and I it were is just a- like what a horrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> it is. There's something nice to have the choice taken away from you about an additional rest because you know oh, I, was great. I think as spellcasters too, like we're so worried about conserving our spells, and like I was in that last fight, not knowing if I would die, and now I'm like, yeah, fuck it, balls to the wall, like no more rests, use my spells as I see fit. Um, to that end, well, uh, can you yeah. tell us exactly how many fights we have left? Sure. You have, wait a minute, Kevin, I got <laughs> You uh, son of a bitch. Um, enough. We have enough. Yeah, it's fun, because I don't think you guys have any real clue. But we have the map, don't we? You do have a map, but it's not a detailed map of the command section. You just know that, like, there's not much to it. We don't know how many rooms are in the command section? You don't, know the, the map you have of that is was highly secure. You just know that there's a section of the ship that was dedicated and to the And just based section. on the size of it, it can't be yeah, that it's, big. It's not that large, especially now that you've seen one of the rooms. Okay. Um, uh... I want to do two things here. I want to I want to talk about your abilities because I I think I told you about a month and a half ago. Start preparing those level twelve characters. So I'm sure you have them uh, prepared. If not, uh, whoever doesn't can go last. But uh, let's talk it out. Who wants to go first? Level twelve, right? Twelve. 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 A dozen levels. I'll go. I Friss actually took another level in operative. Because uh, for this entire book, fighting all undead creatures, all of my biohacker abilities are completely useless. Oh, that's so, so lame. So, yeah, so I went back and took another operative level. So the one thing that I got the new um, talent, whatever it's called, for operative is I got I took Trap Spotter. So I get a double my edge, operative's edge bonus to find traps with my perception. And I get an auto roll chance to find a trap when I'm within 10 feet of it, which fits in with the new eyes thing too. That's like thematically plays into what he's got embedded in his skull now. So, very cool, very cool. Awesome. God, one of the uh, one of the handful of characters that has built the same uh, PC from level one. Uh, yeah. Who else wants to go? Uh, I can go. Uh, there's not a terrible amount that comes uh, I get a new you know a new connection power uh, which is I'll, I'll save for when it actually becomes relevant uh, and I get a fifth level another I'm sorry another uh, fourth level spell um, so yeah and I was I was able to add I was able to kind of ditch an old spell and replace it because uh, I felt especially useless against the undead too so I've been I'm trying to help myself out there okay uh, who's next? Uh, Dax will hop in. Dax is, um, I'm loving this soldier. He feels so powerful. I, I think he's, it's an awesome class at this level. Uh, yeah. and I just added 
Um, a feat, uh, another combat feat uh, at this level, which uh, now, of course, I'm blanking on the name of uh, Penetrating Attack. And so previously I had had uh, Unstoppable Strike. Uh, I don't know if these stack it would be interesting, uh, David. It's up to you. But uh, well, it's actually up to Troy, but you, you <laughs> let me know, David, if there's an actual rule on it. But I had Unstoppable Strike, which is a minus five reduced energy resistance to enemies. Uh, I then took Penetrating Attack, which you have to be a 12th level uh, fighter to take. And it uh, allows me to ignore the first five points of all DR and all energy resistance. So it basically oh, wow. reduces all DR by five. And what's your question? Cool. Does that stack with my unstoppable strike? So do I ignore five points of physical damage, but then 10 points of energy damage if I'm using an energy weapon because I have oh, unstoppable strike, which is reduce enemy's energy resistance by five. Penetrating attack is ignore the first five points of energy resistance. So I, I think they could. there's other that says they yeah. don't stack. But. Sounds stackable to me uh, because they use two different words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two, two different verbs, um, specific over general. Uh, what do you think, David? Yeah, I mean, I, I would go that route. I'll go through the FAQs and the erratas. I know you love erratas, Joe. Just Big in case fan. They, Big they, fan <laughs> of errata. <laughs> if they explicitly mention this not working, I'll let you know. But right. as I read it, I think it should work together. Great. I think it should, and I almost guarantee that the errata eliminates your uh, ability to use it. <laughs> uh, it's called penetrating was attack. Like, this is broken! <laughs> uh, all right, we, that was the three characters that have uh, been the same characters from episode one. What about uh, Saiyan, PG, and Callum? I, I mean, I feel like Let's I have so that. much. I, 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 I Oh, yeah, you, I mean, you've got a lot because you have been rebuilt like yeah. a six million dollar man. <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, I know I've been saying it a bunch that I've like, I have such a cool character. She's so cool. Like, just wait to and see what she can do. And then like, you know, uh, you've said that for I, a while now. Yeah. And then I didn't, I didn't account for the fact <laughs> you, that, you, you know, keep, you keep saying it. Mm -hmm. I know We're I waiting. keep saying it because I, I've spent I've spent a hundred thousand credits on building this character, and I went for fun versus uh, perhaps like the optimized choice. You know, like the fucking getting—I don't know—I didn't get like the fucking dick ring of resistance or whatever people want me to get. Like, the <laughs> fucking people were clamoring for that. Yeah. Like I don't they know. Wanted uh, that dick ring of fire they resistance, wanted a but real bad. You wouldn't, like, you wouldn't yeah. give in. Good for you, Eleanor. No, I, I got Stuck like to your I guns. got. The, I got cool stuff, but I'm, I am I made her into an envoy because uh, we're never going to get to this anyway. So uh, PG was, you know, subjugated to a lot of weird shit with the drow. And uh, she was basically trained to become this demure pet. And therefore, I thought, like, that's so fucked up. She became a lot more charming than from what you remember. And it's, you know, clear that she's not that charming to any of you. But uh, so she's an envoy and she's going to buff the hell out of you because I feel like we needed buffers. And, yeah, that's cool. Um, and then, so I picked a bunch of cool envoy tricks, and I also um, uh, have some. And then I made her super augmented, augmented, augmented. You know that word. And mm -hmm. uh, and for number twelve, I chose improved get him uh, as her nice. improvisation. Oh, oh, it's a good one. Is it plus two? Uh, it, it's a plus two and it's a bunch of other cool stuff. Uh, I think it also like has a... Wait, where the hell fuck is it? Uh, yeah, I had uh, an enemy improved, that had improved get him and I was like, that's pretty cool. Uh, as a standard action, yeah, you do plus two, increases, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a plus two, but I also have improved... Um, uh, I have the clever... Yeah, I have a bunch of cool things that I think is going to come up. But for, for number 12, I got that, uh, which is I think is the cool the cool thing I for number 12 uh, but yeah and uh, we'll see we'll see what uh, what other stuff will come up in combat uh, she still has some stuff yet left even though I did spend a lot of money uh, throwing a grenade that went nowhere <laughs> last week <laughs> uh, very cool and obviously the the uh, the pet uh, nature of PG was alluded to in that flashback when we saw the mother drow like just yeah rubbing her hand on you yeah, yeah. um Callum? 
Uh, it wasn't too exciting for Witch Warper. I got another uh, fourth level spell, which is cool. But I think the cooler thing is I got an additional alternative uh, or alternate outcome, which is Ooh. a special thing that I have, which I've used before oh. to buff people. But basically I can once a day, now twice a day, I can reroll one attack, saving throw, ability check, or skill check that I attempt, or I can burn some RP and choose to use a reaction and lessen a critical hit against an ally to a normal hit. So oh. I've done that before, but it's like, you got to use it at the right moment. So now I'll have right. two two more for this whole adventure. Fuck. That's crazy because like, you know, next combat, uh, assuming there is one, someone could crit early in the fight and you're like, well, I, I can just negate that. But like, what if there are crits that are going to kill a character? Do you wait for that or do you never get to, it's a tough call, mm -hmm. but a really cool ability. Uh, and we've already seen it uh, save Linnea. Um, of course yeah. she then died. Uh, <laughs> Seiyan, say me. Seiyan, with this <laughs> level up and with the uh, Tyrant's Grasp, what was that called? The uh, That's it. The Warlord, the Warlord, Warlord Stern, Warlord Stern <laughs> and the ability to uh, uh, Mark II Ability Crystal, uh, Ability Gem that uh, had Meishun's name on it. Between those two and the level up, Seiyun got an additional like 46 skill points. So oh my god. She, she's just been able to max out several different things. Yes, because she now has a 26 intelligence with a plus eight bonus. Wow. Wow. Her dex is now a 22, which brings her CAC to 30 and her EAC to 29, which is really big. One Incre second. Is this a level where all your ability scores go up as well? No, it is no. not. That would have How'd been you no. get the plus eight from the six? Yeah, from the plus six into the, the Whirlard Stone. My God, 26 intelligence? <gasps> yes. Uh, so like You're that a smart cookie. is now incredibly per 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 uh, perceptive and knows every language except for two on the list of like commonly known languages in the universe. Um, that That's also amazing. means seven first level spell slots, seven second level spell slots, six third level spell slots, five fourth level spell slots. So a lot of power in the battle coming up. It's like she leveled up. She knew this was, she was awakening at the right time. When this thing came out of the sky, when it showed up around the gate of the 12 suns, she was activated. And it's like, she's fully awakening now. I'm not gonna talk about the new spells I get because it was so much fun unveiling Baleful Polymorph that way. Needless yeah. to say, David will keep me honest on it. But I will talk about an ability I never used before, which really makes a Technomancer different from a mage or a sorcerer. It's the Cash Capacitor which is a technological item on a Technomancer's body that you can cast a spell into on a list of spells approved by him, and the duration will not expire for 24 hours. Until 12 level, my options were Detect Radiation, Disguise Self, Keen Senses, or Unseen Servant, which are all more or less not that useful. They're nice to haves, not great to haves. I have now added at 12th level spider climb into my cash capacitor. So for 24 hours, I can just climb anywhere. And I love that mobility. I could have added like lesser resistant armor, which would have given me like DR5 or dark vision. But I love the idea that Seiyun can just go up on the walls whenever she wants now. So very cool, very cool level up for me. I'm very excited. Cool. Yeah, that is uh, very cool. And when you think back to how you found Seiyun, Seiyun was like a, a, a new version. It's almost like an improved, perfected version. Like Meishun was a, a version, whatever, 2.0, 3.0, whatever. And now this is, and you're unlocking all these new abilities. You're, you're superhuman. Um, very, very cool. So when you think about the the grand scheme of things right now where the situation is you are about to attempt to save the galaxy but will most likely perish in doing so seems to be the only option according to osteth you understand what the situation is you had a choice if you could get to the bridge and take over the Empire of Bones, you could drive it directly into the stellar generator and destroy it. But it would destroy all of you as well. This is the last rest of your life. 
last twist of your life. This is some of you have been adventuring together for a while. Ever since Absalom Station, Friss, Dax, Kreska met there on that same shuttle that landed in uh, Bay 51, I think, when the guy, Durvor Kiel, was like, over here. And then definitely poof. was not 51. 95? 90? 96? 94? 94? 96. Bay 94? Whatever it Bay it was. Right? <laughs> I'll Whatever let you know. Bay it was. <laughs> San Francisco Bay, it could have been. The point is, you've been together for a while and you understand what's ahead. What are you guys talking about on your last night? I'm thinking about like the, the last, you know, penultimate Game of Thrones when they're sitting around the <laughs> fire. You know, it's that. This is your moment like that for these characters. What do you do? What do you talk about? Cool. Kreska takes some time to meditate. So she, for a moment, for a little while, she's just going to be off to the side, just very quietly sitting, trying to reach out, make contact with the music of the spheres, which she found when she was in the prison cell for all of those years, for those 16 years where she had no contact with any living being, but then eventually, through the kind of solitude-driven madness, she eventually touched the void and made contact with something, and she's just trying to get a sense of that once again. Um, Callum goes over to um, Dr. Friss and he says "Um, hey doc I um, I have a question do you remember yes boy you remember when we had to big blue eyes looking at you (laughs) (laughs) ay 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 Um, remember nice eyes remember when we had to share uh, that room back on the Sarissa when Dax was playing playing too loud and and you couldn't sleep and you were complaining and I said you could sleep in my room and then we had we shared that room um I I just wanted to tell you I wasn't eavesdropping but I was awake because I was thinking about some stuff and you were talking in your sleep and um I was just wondering if if you knew um a, a guy named Mr. Hush yes I know Mr. Hush. Why? Um, because I I also, well, I worked for him. Well, I didn't work for him. Um, yeah, I knew him too. And um, you just sounded really scared in your, I think you're having a nightmare or something and you said his name. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that uh, uh, he's he's actually dead. He's dead. Hush is dead. Yeah, I killed him accidentally. How? You'd killed him? I think I did. I don't actually really remember. I just got so mad. And I was so fed up of being pushed around and beaten. And I just wanted out. And um, I don't, I kind of blacked out and it's happened before and that's kind of how I discovered my powers, but I didn't know how to control it and I was on a ship and then I, I don't know. Has made a lot of people feel that way, including me, but no one ever has been able to do what you say you've done. Are you sure? Did you see a body? Uh, yeah, I pushed it out of the airlock. That should do it. Well, what was left of it? There wasn't a lot left of it. There is some strength in you. I just want to make sure, was he bad guy? He was a bad guy, right? Like I didn't do (laughs) something. (laughs) <laughs> Boy, he was the worst guy there was in the whole packed world. There was nobody worse than him. Don't feel any ounce of remorse for what you've done. You've done a great, good thing. 
<laughs> now I feel okay. I feel okay going to the end with you. He like grabs you by your shoulders. He said, you, the boy who killed us. Together we go to the end. <laughs> At least we live after us. <laughs> Good yeah. job. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, and Dr. Frisk, I think you're a great doctor. And I I trust you. So um, uh, thank you for being my doctor also. You are. You're a good patient. Very good. <laughs> ah, she's dead. <laughs> Killed by poor you. <laughs> I did see that one coming. <sighs> I only wish that the twins had been dead too. Oh. Thing one, thing two. They, yeah, they were too. You killed them too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what started the whole thing. I I hit one so hard, and then the other one hit me so hard, uh, and then I just lost it. But yeah, I kind of obliterated. I blew a hole <laughs> in the ship. I just destroyed it. And he just starts laughing. He's just like rolling around on the ground, just like pounding his little fists into the, into the plating of the floor. And Callum just loses it too. Callum is crying, laughing, doesn't even know what to do. He's never you seen Frisk like this. These people, they're legendary. It's a bit terrified. Everyone in the whole park world, and you killed all three. <laughs> uh, they beat me up so bad. They hurt me all the time. Uh, they they, are, they so do. terrible. Uh, they, they are terrible. Me too. Oh, they I killed. They them. hurt so many people. I hated them. I hated them so much. <laughs> I hated them. I don't know what I did. Ah, boy. And he's like grabbing his cheeks, and it's just like, oh, it's like pouting his fists on his shoulders, and it's just like, ah. Oh, I wish we had some Akatoni or brandy or something right now. Oh, if ever a moment called for it. Or even some of your, uh, what you call it, your uh, mountain stream. Oh, oh I wish. <laughs> I wish. This calls for toast. <laughs> well, if somehow we defy all the odds and pull through, little boy, you, these first rounds on me don't you worry <laughs> ah. 55 just... episodes ago is when <laughs> we saw that moment when Callum mm -hmm. first appeared and he's been sitting with that the whole time yeah. good to know it's the last rest <laughs> <You can. laughs> Yeah, time to get it out <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I mean how brutal for Friss because Friss has been running his whole life and only now finds out he doesn't have to run anymore. And it's too late. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why he didn't had few compunctions about giving up, sacrificing his life right now because his life is is sort of worthless because he just always feels like he has to be on the run. Now realizing that that isn't true anymore, he could have a life now, something more of a of a fulfilling life, but it's too late. He thinks. Wow. Anybody else do anything on their final sleep? Uh, I think Seiyun kind of pops her head around the corner while Dax is like working on his new weapon and like figuring it out. And she says, I'm sorry to interrupt your preparations, Dax, but when the captain shared her memories with me, I saw many an occasion where you protected Mei Shun in the past, including in the hideout of the Devourers, where she met her untimely end. Were you friends? What kind of person was Mei Shun before? She died. Uh, Dax is, he's not working on it. He's sitting down and he's got his hands resting uh, palms up on both of his knees. And the spear is just laying across his hands and he's just looking at it almost completely still. 
and slightly rolling it back and forth across his knuckles and just scanning it, the length of it, as you come around the corner. And he turns his head up and seems to be snapped out of a thought. And he looks at you and says, There were only a few I met after leaving astral extractions. A few, the captain included, and Dr. Friss, that ever saw me as anything other than a worker. And it was very good. She was a good person, though I hesitate to define anyone. I learned a great deal from another friend who you may not know. His name was Qualo. And we we were in a band together. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> and uh we really rock. We <laughs> <laughs> I only recently grew to love music and he explained to me a lot about what lyrics meant and he liked to talk about the great stories within lyrics and I understood I think more than about the person of Meishan she was troubled I think in the same way that I was or am we both were manipulated we both were used by powerful people to do their bidding with very little free will of our own but we both broke free of that Qualo, he he had his freedom for a long time and he got into a lot of trouble but he also he also got out of it too and made something of himself and I I have a lot of respect for both of them. I don't know you very well, Seyun. Why is it that you are willing to give your life for this? I don't know. Before I explain the why I am, I just want to let you know that I'm jealous of you and of Qualo and Meishan, even though you said you had troubles, you also said that you learned things about yourself and about others through your experiences. I've only been awake for a few days. Most things that are only awake that long are toddlers and taken care of by others. Parents or a community around them and and here I am fully formed and killing things alongside you all who seem to be better than the things I'm killing. So that's why I'm jealous of you. That's why I'm okay moving forward. I saw in the memories that Kreska shared with me and sometimes when I close my eyes, she kind of pauses for a second there. Sometimes when I close my eyes, I see what the Cult of the Devourer was aimed at, which is absolution through oblivion, a cleansing of everything wrong with life by its elimination. I myself have no right to exist. In fact, before my existence, I existed in the nothingness that they are trying to place upon the entire universe against its will. And as I look down at my hands and across at your eyes, 
I just think about how strange it is to be anything at all. And I'm glad that I am. And I think if I can do something to help other people be and exist, I'd like to. That's all. There's a song about that. (laughs) It brings a memory to mind. How strange it is to be anything at all. It is a very clear, someone has said this before. It is what I love about music. This shared understanding of what we can't express in mere words. An emotional journey beyond the simple and into the complex. I spent, though I've been around many more years than you, I spent nearly all of them devoid of any growth, of any emotional learning. But something happened to me and I started to understand, started to learn something different. And then he spins, or not spins, but lifts the spear up and turns it vertically and then puts it down and looks up at it. I can just imagine it's so big. And as he's sitting, looking up at this huge magical spear, he's just, (laughs) this itself is, I'm sitting here thinking, Who held this before me? There must be an incredible story. And now I hold it. And only some months ago, I was hauling cargo for astral extractions. No hope of ever doing anything else. And when I say no hope, I mean no hope. There wasn't a thought of it. It didn't exist. They did something to me. They removed my understanding of what could be. Just as the cult of the devourer attempts to remove the understanding of all that can be. That is why I'm here. As Seiyun hears this from Dax and thinks about someone else holding onto something and what does that mean now and does this item take on a new identity now that someone else holds it? Does it lose what happened in the past? Seiyun looks at Dax and says, Thank you for speaking with me and giving me some peace before this all started. Um, Whereas you may have some difficulty feeling emotions from what you've told me, I have a difficulty in feeling them all too strongly. And she's just woken up and she's thinking about all these things and feeling these adult emotions that she'd never dealt with. And it's probably more shocking than waking up on the thing. And she just says, excuse me, Dex, I uh, I need to rest. Okay. And he goes back to just looking at this weapon. And staring silently, his head barely moving. But there's a million thoughts running through his head. And Seiyun is actually like in a darkest corner possible and just sobbing. (sighs) Meanwhile, Kreska continues to meditate silently throughout all of this. What about PG? PG um, sits solemnly. She's very frail. She's very old. You can see the age of like this super old body, but she's so um, mixed with robotics at this point that she's. It just looks weird to see this crooked person, but she's observing everyone, and she is, despite watching Seon crying in a corner, uh, she feels tremendous amounts of sympathy. She's watching uh, Dr. Friss and Callum laughing <laughs> on the floor. She's watching Kreska med- meditating, and she's watching Dax having this moment with his sword, and and uh, she starts crying because 
she thinks about the fact that um, throughout all this torture she was through, the only thing that kept her going was this love. Uh, love for these people that she didn't even remember. Like, there was no memory of it, and they, they removed all those memories, but uh, she had it inside of her all the time. And I think she, at, you know, maybe at breakfast the next day or something, when there's a moment to talk to all of them, she will want to say that, I've been through hell. I, uh, I've, I've seen a lot throughout my years. I've been through two lifetimes, and they were both terrible for me but I believe the only reason why I'm here is because of you you're the only family I've ever had your love transcended the entire universe quite literally you transcended time, the timeline You and uh, it sounds morbid but I am happy to be back to see this to the end with you um, I'm happy that we can do this together. Even with my new my new friends, Callum and Seyun. We can do this. I still have hope in all of you. Because I think at the end of the day, love is what will, will carry us through. But if nothing else, Captain, let's blow them up. <laughs> yes. We have been given a great gift. Even the, in this darkest hour, we have a common purpose. Not many people get that across this great universe, but we have it and we may use it to save all life as we know it. May we keep that in mind as we face the horrors ahead. We fade from the captain's speech to the six of you, armored and suited up, new weapons, new gear, new augmentations, new everything, new powers, skulking <laughs> through the hallways on your way back to the trophy room. And you get back there. What do you do? Did we search the bodies? You didn't. Um, <laughs> I don't think they have anything on them. Those, uh, oh. s yeah, they had the black things monks. that they used up. Uh, yeah, nothing on them. Oh, right, they're monks. Yeah. They don't have yeah, shit. Yeah, they're ascetic, so. <laughs> Probably yeah. Didn't have a whole lot of witches <laughs> on them. Um, Was the four trophies not enough? <laughs> I touch. <laughs> Callum touched <laughs> one, casting grave grave words, uh, and he just says, "Like, where's the, where's the leader?" Grave What's his words. Name? I, I forgot his name. He told us his name, didn't he? Captain Gurdon Shaw. Gurdnashal, yes. Where's Gurdnashal? I grabbed the monk by his head. I wonder if grave words works Wait, on an undead. Oh, uh -huh. interesting. It's a corpse. Uh, I force a touched corpse to talk to me. Um, <laughs> this just sounds so abusive, what you're doing. Huh? <laughs> nah, it's fine. It's also, uh, is there a save associated with it? There's a 10% no. chance that the information is actually useful. Yeah, it's, just a can it, it's just a cantrip, I, folks. I remember, we're having fun. I remember when you brought <laughs> this up before, you were like, it's just a cantrip. I knew there was something ah. that made it like very hard to work. Uh, here we go. A corpse must have a mouth or means to speak in order for the spell to function. Check. And the spell doesn't affect a corpse that has been turned into an undead creature. Wow. Being a spellcaster against undead <laughs> is fucking useless. You can't do cool spells, and you can't even do useless spells for fun flavor because it doesn't work. <laughs> it is. I it's recommend really growing tough. claws because that's basically the only thing I've been able to do in this book. Claws looks at his hands. I don't know. I don't have time. I, my fingernails don't grow that fast. <laughs> you have. Uh, what looks like three sets of doors, the big double doors uh, that have been uh, barricaded uh, in the fourth section 
and then uh, in the port and starboard up these platforms are other doors. Captain, I suggest we go to the port side. Very well. Is there any way to... So is the barricade like a a crude barricade of stuff that's been put in front of it? Or no, it's, been it's kind like of the second sealed. door. Uh, Forest Moon of Endor doors. <laughs> the second doors. You do see uh, <laughs> what looks like a disc-shaped slot uh, below a computer screen. Um, so, Doctor. Yeah. Could you investigate these, this door? With pleasure, Captain. Uh, I'm going to do... I'll do a trap check. Okay. Uh, oh, wow. Um, that is... 46. And was that a computer's check? No, that or was, was just that? a perception. Just a perception, yeah. It doesn't appear yeah. to be uh, trapped. Okay. Uh, and then I will do a computer's check, and that is a... That is a 40. All right. Uh, it does look hackable. Um, probably very difficult, uh, but you're a stud. However, you don't think you can even access it until you get whatever needs to go into that slot. It's uh, this like circular disc, uh, but thicker than like a CD. Something needs to be input to even try to access the system. Perhaps a laser disc. Yes. It's not a compact disc. Yes. It's more of a laser disc. All right. To the port we go. As Captain K says that, all of the monitors on the four section spring to life. Uh You hear static in your ears. And a dimly lit shadow sort of walks towards the camera. And you see uh, just a shadowed face of a Vesk. (gasps) In your comm units, you hear the same voice that addressed you in the Grav train station. (gasps) The voice of Captain Gerd Nashal. Whoa. I must say, this is truly impressive. Sadly, your altruistic journey ends here. Once I was made aware of your presence, I had my team search the infosphere for information on you all. It came up rather easily. All of a sudden, all the screens switch and you see your appearance on Good Morning Glipglorp. You see headline newspapers about the Driftark 5 returning from the Acreon. All this stuff that you did publicly when you were trying to avoid the limelight. It appears that some of you are well known for your deeds, though all of your lives are shrouded in mystery. However, you, Captain Kreska, are the most interesting of all, it seems. How fitting for you to meet your demise at my hands, since, in many ways, I owe a part of my current existence to you. I will honor your sacrifice by allowing you to join me. I only wish I could offer the same to the others like you who were used as a means to an end. What is the meaning of this, Captain? I have no idea what you're talking about. A long tongue like slithers out of the Vesk's mouth as he licks his lips, again moving in the shadows of the screen. What's everybody else doing while this is going on? Perception check. I'm watching the doors. I'm checking all the exits. 
These monitors are on the wall around the double barricaded door to the north? Yes. What about Seiyun? Uh, um, jeez. God, there's so many things I could be doing to get ready for whatever's going to come out of the door. Um, what? Seiyun will spread out further, fan out, and um, attempt to have um, a view. God, where's a good place to be? Where's a good place to be? She'll stand. Your time is up. She'll stand uh, <laughs> towards the. Uh, is that port? Uh, the, the east side of the map as we're looking at it right now. And uh, because the forest moon of Endor doors probably aren't going to open. So she'll be ready on this side in case someone comes in. Okay. I want to say I rolled a 32 on my perception check. Callum is like feeling the ground like earthbender style trying to determine which exit or entrance anybody is like moving towards. He's listening. Okay. So everyone's just kind of perceiving and looking around and spreading out. Callum, you don't sense any movement whatsoever. PG? Uh, PG's, uh, I would like to uh, uh, PG to stay with Kreska and she um, can sense sort of the distress and puts a hand on Kreska's shoulder um, to like a, a calming hand on her shoulder. Uh, so Dax say, will move yeah. to the, oh, Dax, sorry, go ahead. No, no, Dax moves where? He moves to the port door where he was going to walk through. Uh, and he just, I, I'm assuming he's up there when like the monitors turn on and start to, uh, so uh, he'll also just roll a perception, um, just to see if there's any imminent danger coming uh, There's a, a 21. Okay. So less than Callum, you yeah. do get even get the same sense. So you say, what is the meaning of this captain? Yes. Yes. I suppose it is fitting. You now know. You see, in my former life, I was the head of an organization in the Viscarium that did not agree with the signing of the Absalom Pact. How could a superpower like the Viscarium kneel before weaker planets when we were at the height of our power? So others, like me, dissatisfied with our toothless government, looked for alternatives and we found the perfect allies in another aggrieved party the corpse fleet the deal was quite simple we would send them the bodies of those slain in battle in exchange for their support their army would grow and once the time was right we would join forces to wage war against the Visk, overthrow the government, and take back the Viscarium. Our plan was not without problems, though, for we discovered an agent in our midst working with another group to try and expose us. Freedom fighters, they called themselves. <laughs> Freedom? I still laugh when I think of the irony. This group, they acted in the shadows and they were good, but we were better. They could hide, yes, but their families could not. So we abducted one member from each person's family that we could find and threw them into a maximum security prison as hostages to smoke them out. We erased their lives and pinned horrible crimes on them that would force their families into ruin so that even when they were released years later, all their lives would be forfeit. Lives like yours Chris Kaletha, Doc Vodoro. <gasps> what? A futuristic, like, mugshot image pops up on the screen of you, Kreska, from the past when you were incarcerated with your name, several other bits of information, your height, your weight, your eye color, along with 
a bunch of other photos of other mostly Vesk men and women similarly incarcerated, falsely incarcerated. You see, had your parents and their cohorts succeeded in their plan to expose my operation, why their names would be known throughout recorded history as having stopped my reign. The Doc Fedoro name and the names of all these families we destroyed would be known. But instead, you have brought irrevocable ruin to them and to yourself. And of course, over the years, in all my dealings with the corpse fleet, I came to realize the true beauty of undeath. The Vesk steps into frame and, frame and you just see this undead Vesk <sighs> man with like skin falling off his face and this long purple tongue with like pincers on the end of it just lapping all around as he's talking. What good is power? when it's only temporary. Now look at us, just two captains on opposite sides of the fence. But the powerful will always destroy the weak, and soon the corpse fleet shall rule the galaxy. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> Josh. Oh, shit. My you God. It's really happening. <laughs> the time Dang. is now. Game. Over. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this captain is like really breaking the fourth wall. Is it taking you guys out of it too? It's confusing when he does that. <laughs> He's just trying to get in your head. <laughs> He's in my head. Don't let him in my head. No, no, no. Good night, everybody. Oh, everybody. Uh, <laughs> night. Night. <laughs>